these sky high real estate prices are going to come crashing back down to earth. I, I first of all, I have no idea what Peter Schiff is talking about. I agree with Tom. I think they're going to be up probably up to about 10 percent. What artificial lending standard are you talking about? Most of the profits that people have in real estate are going to vanish, just like the profits in the, in the, in the dot coms in 1999-2000. It's a fantasy. People can't sell their house. Subprime is tiny. Subprime is a tiny, tiny it, blip. It's not <laughs> tiny, and again, it's not just subprime. It's the entire mortgage market, right? Every all right. Well, Tracy, you're, you're disagreeing. With simply it. wrong. Well, point. you're simply wrong about that. No, I'm not. The financials, as I keep saying, are just super bargains. Stay away from the financials. They're toxic. They're not cheap. They're expensive. You think wow. they're at? You, you think they're at? Well, let me finish. So pessimistic. Their earnings are going to disappear. I remember they a year ago. No when earnings. Their earnings are oh, huge. Ben, ben, last year when people were talking about the party is over for the United States, we cannot continue borrowing to live beyond our means and, and consuming foreign products. It's you must over be a left right at a party. Huh? No, I'm pretty fun. No, pretty no, fun. Okay. 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 He's been called Dr. Doom for his spot on predictions of the financial crisis. Uh, Peter Schiff is also president of Euro Pacific Capital. Peter, um, you have been mocked on all of these financial shows going back to 2005. Oh my gosh. Going back to 2005. And not only did you predict problems, you actually explained what was going to happen. Why didn't anybody listen? You were Cassandra. Well, nobody wanted to listen. You know, when you're in a bubble and everybody is partying, yeah, you know, nobody wants to be confronted with reality. But the problem, yeah, but the problem is people still don't understand what's happening right now. What we're experiencing right now is not the problem. This is the consequence of the problem. The problem was back in 2005 and 2006 and earlier when we were borrowing and spending all that money. That's when we were digging ourselves into this hole. Unfortunately, as painful as it is, the recession is what we need. The recession is the market's way of curing the economy and the more the government interferes with the recession the worse we're making the problems okay, it's like, see, it's like a fever it's like a fever right sure I mean look we had a phony economy based on borrowing money spending borrowed money we need to base our economy on saving money on producing things and so the credit crunch this is not the problem credit needs to be allocated away from consumers we need to stop borrowing money and buying stuff and concentrate on saving our money so we can make stuff and maybe that's going to mean a rather severe recession but what the government's going to do is it's going to turn this into an inflationary depression which is going to be much much worse okay how are they going to do that well, remember, we, we need to rebalance the economy. Even President Obama will acknowledge, and Ben Bernanke acknowledges, that we got into trouble by borrowing and spending too much money. The solution isn't to go borrow and spend even more. The solution is that we do the opposite. And unfortunately, we have to allow a lot of companies to fail that really shouldn't but, be in but business. But that's politically unpopular to well, say we've got to actually cure the bubble by well, letting it pop. Sure. I mean, but doing the right thing is always politically unpopular. That's why we need to have some elected officials that are willing to jeopardize their own political careers for the future of the country. I mean, they like to play lip service to it, but all they're trying to do is, is keep it going. They want to tell Americans that there are no consequences, that there are no tough choices. Just like, you know, that news we've covered. They're saying that the government wants us to go out and spend. I mean, how can that be the solution? We're broke. Well, Peter, that's what I don't understand. You have economists who say that it was the spending, the rampant consumerism that crippled the long-term prospects of this economy, and yet they want to encourage more consumerism. Well, the problem is they're, they're fixated on Keynesianism. They learned about Keynes in, in, in college, and Keynes is it's nonsense. It's like he's like a witch doctor when, to medicine. You can't follow Keynes. Keynes didn't understand economics. The, the solution is not to have the government spend money because everybody else is broke, or the government uh, to provide credit when there's no credit left. Credit comes from savings, and when the savings are gone, the credit is gone. Mike Barnacle. And, Mike Barnacle. How do you save money when you've lost your job? Yeah. Well, it's look, it's difficult. I mean, first you got to get another job. Yeah, it's but I mean, possible. <laughs> but we need to get another job. The government's not going to provide jobs. The government doesn't have any resources. All the government can do is reallocate resources from one part of the economy to another. But what they do is they take it away from some place where it would be efficiently used, and they move it to some place that's inefficient. When you say the government right now is interfering with the recession, what do you mean by that? Well, they're not letting it run its course. They're doing exactly what Hoover did and Roosevelt did that created the Great Depression. We 
have our resources badly allocated in this economy. We have too many resources in financials, in the service sector. We need to free those resources up so they can move more into goods production. And we have an economy, again, that's based on people buying things they can't afford. That needs to stop. Uh -huh. Is this part of the problem? Absolutely. I mean, they're 100% part guys. of the problem. Well, the, it's not that the hedge fund people are the problem. It's the damage that they've done with all the cheap money that was supplied by the Federal Reserve. It's the government that's the problem. I mean, you can't blame necessarily blame uh, w Wall Street for problems. You but know, we are. Well, look, uh, President Bush admitted right that Wall Street got drunk, and he's right. They were drunk. Main Street was drunk. But what uh, the president doesn't point out is where they get all the alcohol. Okay, guess, Why were they drunk? The government liquored them up. The government uh, liquored them up. But see, here's the thing, Peter, and this is what's so frustrating to me. People think this is coming from an ideological place. It's not. I, I hear people saying that borrowing and spending caused the crisis. We want to borrow even more and spend even more. I hear that the cheap dollar liquored America up. And yet last week, the Fed pumps in a trillion more dollars into the economy to make the dollar even more worthless. China responds by creating their own currency. Well, they, they already have their own currency. The problem is it's pegged to the dollar, and that's been creating problems. But even if you look at uh, Ben Bernanke's interview on 60 Minutes, Bernanke admitted that the problem started because we borrowed too much money from the rest of the world and didn't invest it properly. The problem was we didn't invest it at all. We uh. consumed it. And when you borrow money and spend it, it's impossible to pay it back. Okay, so, so what do we do now? Because I just had Chris say to my ear, well, you know, these are smart guys that are putting together these packages, but these are, again, the same smart guys that didn't listen to you in 2005, mocked you in 2006, ridiculed you in 2007, and said you were short-sighted in 2008. So what do we do going forward? Well, we need to do the opposite of everything that we're doing now. I mean, number one, part of the problem is the government is too big. It's too burdensome. It's too expensive. It needs to shrink. We can't afford this bloated government. So rather than expanding government, government needs to contract. I mean, President Obama is right that health care is too expensive. The only way to bring the cost down is to get the government out of it. And we also need to restore sound money. We need higher interest rates to encourage savings and discourage spending so that's the opposite of what we're doing and we need to let companies fail we don't need to bail people out we need to deal with the consequences yes. of the problems and not keep sweeping them under the rug John, John Meacham you can make this argument in purely economic terms and of course who's going to cross Peter after he's been right for the past three or four years however politically that's just not feasible, is it? I mean, you can't, you won't have a president saying, this is going to hurt, but we've got to go through a couple of really rough years mm -hmm. to right this economy and deleverage. Right. It's, it's a brilliant clinical analysis. I don't know how politically, and, in a, in, and I don't mean that in a who wins the next mm -hmm. race. I mean politically in the pure sense of the word, what Aristotle meant, the people, the city. How do you take note of and handle the human cost of the yeah. excesses. Well, the, the problem is the more the government interferes to try to make the cost you know less burdensome the worse they make it you know we're suffering because of all the economic stimuluses of the past we don't need to stimulate anymore the stimulus is the source of our problems because all they're doing is stimulating yeah. more consumption and more debt and making the problems yes. bigger but is this a pure Adam Smith argument are you saying we should just, just well, it's a free step back? Sure. it's a free market mm -hmm. argument it's an Austrian ar argument I mean it's the only argument that works. I mean, yeah. it's the only you, you know, Mike, the thing is, though, the reason why it doesn't work politically is when there's a crisis, oh. people demand that you do something. It doesn't matter whether it's productive or not. They want you to move politically now. Act like you care. For the moment. Write a big check. For the moment. Yeah. Repump <laughs> consumerism. Get me back into the malls. Get me back on the airplanes. We, but, get me back to Disneyland. But, I want the life I had know, a year ago. If yeah. you want much bigger government, I mean, that's the way to go. Because the more the government intervenes to solve the problem, the bigger right. they make the problem, which means the more cries there are for government to solve it. At some point, the crisis is going to be so big, we're going to have a crisis in our currency where the dollar collapses. Yeah. And prices just go through the roof for everything that we want to buy. And the whole economy will grind to a halt. I, and maybe then, then we'll finally do the right thing. I, I doubt it. Peter, thank you for being with us. I, I doubt that we'll ever do the right well, thing. Well, we, we will it's eventually. Or,
are we're going yeah, to be exactly. forced. Uh, huh? I right. have to. Unfortunately, the longer we wait, the more painful it's going to be to do it. Peter, here, here. your nickname is not Mr. Sunshine, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, they've been mocking him for being too negative for the past four years. Yeah. Calling this. All right, Peter, thank you so much. He's also the author of the little book of bull moves in bear markets. And now let's uh, get a check on business.